Hey, this is James Statton with Lenspiration, and welcome to Making the Most of Your Vacation here in the west suburbs of Chicago, where I spent Christmas with my family. Today, we're going to talk about three keys to staying warm while you're taking pictures when it's freezing outside. Of course, the simple answer is to stay inside, but that's not going to make the most of your vacation. Plus, if you stay inside, you're missing out on a lot of benefits. Consider these benefits of shooting in the cold. When it's cold, less people are out and about, making shooting icons easier. You don't have to wait for people to clear out of the way for pictures. When it's cold, it's the only way to shoot frost texture. It's the only way to shoot ice. It's the only way to shoot snow. Imagine all the opportunities that are missed if you don't get out in the snow. Um, it's the only way to capture winter sports like skiing and ice skating and hockey or snowboarding. It's the only way to shoot practically anything in the wintertime, especially if you're in the mountains or in northern climates like here in Chicago. Less photographers are around in the cold, so there's a greater chance of getting unique pictures as well. Winter landscapes look much better under snow than when there is no snow, if the snow sticks to the trees. Better visibility without leaves on the trees, causing you to see things you may not be able to see in the summertime with the leaves on the trees. There's better light because the sun's lower aspect create longer golden hours. They say that long nights of winter create a greater chance of fog or mist at dawn. Different variety of wildlife due to immigration, uh, migration and habits of nature. Variety in portrait photography. If you do portrait photography, people are wearing scarves and hoods and all kinds of things that relate to winter to stay warm. Better opportunities for black and white photography and it builds a new appreciation for color. When you can't find it, when you do find it, it makes for much more interesting pictures in the wintertime. So if you want to get great pictures in the wintertime, you have to learn to face the cold. And thankfully, it's easy to stay warm in the cold if you keep these three keys in mind. Stay dry, cover up, layer up. So let's look at each one of these in a little more detail. If you're wet, it's a whole lot harder to keep warm. Water acts as a heat transfer, pulling the heat right out of your body and then evaporating, leaving you feeling clammy and chilled. There are two things that will get you wet, your sweat and external moisture, like rain or melted snow or if you fall in the lake. To keep your sweat from making you wet, your base layer, the layer of clothes next to your skin, should be able to wick away perspiration so it can evaporate quickly and should dry quickly so you don't have to spend a lot of time in wet clothing. Synthetic and wool fabrics do this job pretty well. To keep external moisture from making you wet, wear waterproof or at least water resistant outer layers and do everything you can from falling into the lake like I said before. Number two, you're sure to lose heat wherever your skin is exposed. I always bring along a hat of some sort, toboggan, beanie, toque, watch cap, whatever you want to call it, and at least one pair of gloves. If it's really cold, you'll want to wear multiple layers on extremities too. So when I buy a new coat, I always make sure it has a hood on it so that it can provide a second layer for my head when it's windy or super cold. And when it comes to my hands, I will often wear a thin pair of gloves underneath a thicker, more warm pair of gloves. The thin pair of gloves should be thin enough that I can still handle all the little details of the camera controls without having to take them off. And the thicker pair keeps my hands warm while I'm carrying the tripod around or looking for the right angle or just walking around for whatever reason. Covering up completely is the reason why many folks will wear scarves or even ski masks 
but I usually find that these get more in the way than help when I'm doing photography, so I don't normally wear those. Number three, layering up is the third thing to keep in mind if you want to stay warm and cold. And actually, it's not really the layering itself that keeps me warm necessarily. It's how I layer up. If you read any article on how to layer up from someplace like REI or some other outdoor advice source, then you'll see it's really very simple to know how to layer up. And really, it makes sense. There are three basic layers. Number one is your base layer, then you have an insulation layer, and then number three, you have your outer layer. The base layer serves the purpose of moving perspiration away from your skin, like I mentioned before. It should help you stay dry from sweat. Wool, silk, and synthetic fabrics like polyesters do this very well. Cotton doesn't. I've heard it said that cotton kills. Cotton doesn't wick well and takes a long time to dry, so it dramatically increases the chances of hypothermia if it happens to get wet when it's freezing outside. So I always try to steer away from cotton as much as I can. The insulation layer serves the purpose of retaining heat. How much insulation I put on depends on how cold it is. I can always take off insulating layers if I get too warm, due to exercise or an unexpected temperature changes. Natural fibers like wool and down are excellent insulators, as is classic fleece, which insulates even when it's wet. The outer layer, or the shell, serves the purpose of weather protection. Again, it should be waterproof to keep you dry from external moisture, like if it's raining or snowing. Windproof, if that's what you want to be protected from. And breathable, too. Finding all three of these in an outer layer is usually expensive, but it's worth it in the long run if you're going to use it a lot, like I do. What I'm wearing right now is water resistant, which has worked fine for me as long as it's not pouring the rain down. The concept of these three layers, the base layer, the insulating layer, and the outer layer, this concept works for my feet as well. Polyester against the skin, wool insulation, and a good waterproof boot keep my feet warm and dry. And even warm when not dry. I'm no expert in this matter by any stretch of the imagination. And I can really feel for photographers who have been cold in the past. It was just the other day when I was out shooting a architectural project. I was dancing around by the highway trying to keep warm while I was waiting for the sun to move in the right position. What was my mistake? Before heading out, I reasoned that, oh, I won't be out for long. Why well, take the time to layer up? And that's why I was freezing cold out there. So now I've concluded that if I have to exercise to keep myself warm in the cold, then it means that I probably haven't dressed properly for the particular weather that I'm in. If I want to stay warm, then it means that I need to stay dry from sweat and external moisture, cover up exposed skin using gloves or hats, and layering up using a base layer, an insulation layer, and a outer layer to keep me warm. So there you have it. Three keys to staying warm when it's cold outside so you can get out and take pictures, take advantage of the unique opportunities of winter. Thank you so much for joining me here in the west suburbs of Chicago. I hope you learned a lot. Keep learning at www.lenspiration.com. We'll see you next time.